Here we go. I am a first time home buyer. Do I need to put 20% down? Well, uh, this is a very pervasive question that we've seen ever since I've been in the business because we see uh, the attitudes out there, the way the advertisements go. There's a perception that buyers need to have 20% down, or as we've seen in the really competitive market of the last few years, if you don't have 20% down, you're going to be at a disadvantage when the seller's looking at offers. Lane, why don't you expand on this a little bit? Sure. And, and the reason why this question comes up a lot of times too, it, it, this, is, this has come up from our first time homebuyers that we've been working with recently and saving up for 20% 20, 20 down, especially if you're looking for a home in Orange County, that's a lot of money. And so a lot of our first time home buyers lately have not been coming up with 20% down. They've been doing 5% conventional, some doing FHA or 10% conventional. And you know what? They just, I think they want to feel like that they're just, they're not in the minority and, and they, it's really hard to come up with 20%. So um, I will preface this and I, I'll say the same thing right now on this video that I've been telling my first time home buyers that are like even second and third time home buyers aren't really putting 20% down right now um, when they're buying a home. And the reason why is because interest rates are so low. So even some very, very experienced and savvy buyers are maybe putting down a little bit less right now and financing more because they're using, they're withholding a lot of their cash in reserves, either to fix up stuff around the house or maybe put it in other investment vehicles that might uh, generate some positive cash flow for them. So they might not have to do the 20% down. And you know, one thing though, when you put less than 20% down, you do have to pay for mortgage insurance unless you find a product out there. And there's some where they have a, a, a no mortgage insurance less than 20% down loan product. Um, but at the end of the day, it, you have to find the product that works for you. And if you can get into a home right now by putting less than 20% down, but your overall monthly payment is going to be at or less than what you're paying in rent, why wouldn't you do that? You know, it, it's, a, it's a great time to take advantage of the low interest rates. And I just want my first time home buyers to know that they are not in the minority if they're not coming up with 20% down. They're probably in the majority right now. Yeah. And they're in the majority alongside with uh, second and third time home buyers. So, yep, yeah, Lane's right on. And in talking about perception, because we're still in a multiple offer situation in many cases. And if we're representing you as a buyer, we will be competing with other offers. And it's our job as your agent to help overcome the perception to the seller and their agent that a 20% down offer is going to be stronger. Because at the end of the day, what a seller wants is a closed escrow with their money in the bank. When we present our clients offers, we can position you and we do position you no matter what your down payment is as the strongest and the most certain option for that seller to get their escrow closed. It's a myth that the 20% down buyer is going to be more likely to close. The motivated buyer that is compliant with timeframes and listens to their agent is going to be the one that has the highest likelihood of closing. And we've got a great track record of so many stories of getting our offers through for our clients when they're not even the highest offer. They don't have the biggest down payment. We're creating the story and the client and the potential homeowner that the seller wants to see. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So if, I mean, if you're obtaining an FHA mortgage with three and a half percent down and you're pre-qualified, like, wouldn't that be almost as good as if somebody that's putting 50% down, right? Like they're, 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 both of them are pre-qualified. Both of them are going to be able to get the loan and both of them are going to be able to close. So if you're able to, uh, you know, if you're able to purchase right now and you, and you can put three and a half, 5% conventional, 10%, what have you, uh, we, Scott, Scott, no, and I know exactly what it takes to get your offer accepted right now and to show that you're three and a half percent down or 5% down is just as strong as somebody who's putting 50% down. Absolutely. And I'm going to dovetail back to what something that Lane was saying at the very beginning. And it's uh, an absolute model that some of the savviest and uh, biggest investors and highest net worth individuals uh, work with. And that's when uh, the cost of money is cheap, which it is right now with interest rates being so low that by leveraging your loan amount, and as to Lane's point, if you get the payment, your monthly obligation in the comfort zone of where you want, then it makes sense in many occasions, in many circumstances to go ahead and have what we call capital preservation. Cash is king. So don't put all of your cash into the house. Keep some of that out in reserves to use for other investments, savings, whatever. We will always stress though that all of this should be run by your financial advisor team, your, your CPA, uh, financial planner, et cetera, because you want to make sure it all fits in with your individual goals 
and uh, what your near and long term plans are. And most of what I've come across as far as first time home buyers today, like if they're looking at putting 5% down or 10% down for a home in Orange County, chances are they make very good income and they can afford the monthly payment. And if they're currently renting, chances are they might need some uh, tax benefits as well for home ownership. So I guess the conversation, like you just mentioned too, talking to your financial advisor or your CPA, that's a huge crucial step because you know, if you're looking, if you're able and you know that you can afford a monthly payment for a house in Orange County right now, you obviously your income's great. Your credit's probably great. Um, and so that next step is what are the benefits uh, in addition to building equity into something and not putting my money towards rent um, in, in home ownership? Is it, is it, are there tax benefits? Are there, you know, benefits if I, of working from home? If, am I working from home? Can I write off the, the one of the rooms as an office? You know, th stuff like that. Like those are conversations that you can definitely have with, with a CPA or financial advisor. Yeah. You know, this is a super exciting topic right now because we just love uh, being in the trenches and seeing all of this and uh, and helping our clients understand that there are so many different options that you have out there. And one other thing with leveraging, too, and we've just seen this with a couple of clients I've been speaking with one is the other night I was uh, chatting with and she bought in January and she's already been able to recast her loan and get rid of her mortgage insurance because of appreciation. Now, again, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know where appreciation is going, but just this year, even with the current uh, world situation that we have, uh, homes have appreciated. And uh, we've had a couple of clients, as I said, that have been able to get out of the mortgage insurance, get their loans reset, and be able to lower their payment even further when they first purchase. So now um, can, can I push a, a question to you to expand on that a little bit? Only because I recently received that same question, right? So yeah. let's say I'm putting 5% down, I lock in at like a low three interest rate and I'm paying mortgage insurance and it takes five years for me to uh, recoup um, or, or build 20% equity in the home before I can refinance mm -hmm. and get rid of the mortgage insurance. But maybe in five years, the interest rate is four and a half or 5% at that point. Um, you know, it, it, did I screw myself by doing 5% or should I have waited four or five years to do 20%? Well, that's a really great question because again, that it, you're you're posing the question if rates have gone up, what am I going to do? And we don't know, and we don't know if that's going to be the case. But I, I was telling these my buyers at, at the end of the day, I was like, look, at the end of the day, if you're paying a, a little bit of mortgage insurance, chances are, you know, you, you're locked in at a really low rate, anyways. So it probably makes up the difference if rates do go higher, but then all at the same time, where are home prices going to be in five years? Well, and, and, prices and, and, higher than five years. Yeah. And you pose the question to me in that regard. And you know, my, my feeling always is look at your life situation. Now, if you've determined that now is the time for you to get into home ownership or to make that move up or down, and this is the time in life, it's kind of like, you know, some of our gurus in the stock market, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, the sage of the sage of Omaha, you don't want to try to time the market, whether it's home prices or interest rates. If now is your time and you can afford it, you've got the down payment, you can afford the monthly payment. Home ownership is for you. Why would you wait for something that's an unknown? Continue renting. There's one thing that's for certain your rents are going to continue to go up. Your landlord is not going to be very forgiving with regards to that, especially in Orange County where the market is so tight. Well, actually, since they put in uh, rent control in, in California, a lot of the landlords are automatically doing the maximum increases now just because they, I, I don't know, they don't want to get caught in to some sort of rent control situation. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's no answer to that, but what has served our clients well in the 30 plus years I, I've been in the business is whether they're buying or selling, if you've done the homework and the time is right, we can't, we cannot um, dictate what the current pricing uh, climates like nor the interest rates and to, to forecast and stew and worry about what might be in the next few years uh, almost with certainty we've never seen anybody come out ahead of the game by by taking that that wait and see attitude yeah absolutely hey you know what that was a great first question a great way to open up the show i'm excited for what's still to come but um you know we, we do have a couple more questions to discuss but if you have any yourself that you that have been burning in your mind and you want to get that um, out in the open and want us to answer it, feel free to put it in the comment section and we'll get to it.